Pressures and forces are two different things. A pressure exerts a force only when it's applied over an area. So the bigger the area for the same pressure, the bigger the force. This schematic illustrates what's going on in a hydraulic jack. P1 is equal to P2, they're at the same elevation. So there's no pressure difference between 1 and 2. But F1 is not equal to F2 because they're, they've got different areas. The small area at 2 here is subject to a much smaller total force from the pressure than the larger area at 1 here. We can see that illustrated schematically here. Same pressure over a small area and over a large area, F1 is a larger force. So F1 integral over control surface 1 of PDA and if it's a constant it's just P1 A1. Likewise F2 is P2 A2. So the ratio between the forces is the ratio of the areas or the ratios of the diameters squared. This gives you a mechanical advantage like you get in a hydraulic jack. Now the result is you don't have to push as hard on 2 to make it move, to make 2 move down and make 1 move up, but you've got to push farther on number 2 to get a much smaller motion on number 1. So you're not gaining any uh, energy advantage, you're just gaining a mechanical advantage of a smaller force. Forces apply at all surfaces and we can calculate the forces in fluid statics based on the Navier-Stokes equation which if everything is equal to zero we have only pressure forces and gravity and delta P equals rho G delta H. The fluid only acts significantly through pressure acting normal to a surface in a static situation or we can use the same approach to figure out the component of force due to the pressure acting normal to a surface even in a dynamic situation like the flow over a wing. So if we've got a surface here and we draw a unit normal vector pointing outwards then the force acting on that surface is that unit normal vector negative sign to indicate that it's acting in the opposite direction times the pressure times the incremental area dA so that the total force acting on the surface negative because of the direction of the unit normal vector integral over the surface of the unit normal vector multiplied by the pressure times dA. This is a vector force and if we want to do vector calculus we can get the answer out for the complete vector integration. Or we can do it in components. The force acting in the x direction is the integral over the surface of pressure times the projected area in the x direction. So in this case the entire area is projected in the x direction. If we look at a surface like this it's going to have a component of force in the y direction and a component of force in the x direction. We can break it down into components P dAx, that's the projected area in the x direction, plus P dAy, that's the projected area in the y direction. Or we could look at it in the other sense and take a component of pressure and wrap that around. Just don't do both. I'd argue that this is the best way to do it. Always think of the pressure acting on the projected area. If you're looking at the force acting on a horizontal plate in a static reservoir, the pressure is going to be constant over the entire plate. So the total force is the integral over the surface, PDA, but the pressure is the same all over the plate, so it's just the pressure times the area. On a vertical plate, it can be a little more complicated because the pressure varies as you go up and down. Pressure is lowest at the top of the plate and highest at the bottom of the plate, and the width of the plate may be varying. 
So the force will be equal to the integral over the surface of the pressure times the area. Integral over the height, integral over the width, P d width plus times d height is the way we can break this down into two sequential integrals. So we're going to integrate from there to there and then we're going to integrate from there up to there. But the pressure is the same all across the width at a given height. If we've been careful enough to orient our axes such that one is vertical and one is horizontal. Thus, we wind up with the force equal to the integral just over the height of the pressure times the width times d height, the change in height. Or, more reasonably, with the y direction in this direction, f equal to integral from y1 at the bottom to y2 at the top, pressure as a function of y times width as a function of y dy. And we can do that integration.